power generation across Africa has largely been hydro-based, but a growing population and first industrialization pace calls for alternative sources to be harnessed to meet the rising demand. Renewable energy alone is, is not going to be, uh, to be sufficient, and I think the countries uh, are having to, to, to develop other indigenous resources that they have. And I see in the energy mix of the various countries in the region, they are looking at all the, the potential resources that they can use and are making, uh, are making plans and, and taking action to, to, to use, to exploit those. Be it Giordamo in all the East African countries, in the East and the, uh, the West Rift Valley, the wind power, methane gas in Rwanda, peat also in, in Rwanda. And, and natural gas in Tanzania. Each, each country is looking at uh, the, um, the resources that are available to it and, and making the best use of that with a focus of having lower cost, low cost power. Supply of power in East Africa is being fast-tracked through creation of energy power pools transversing through countries in return enabling cross-sharing of energy. We are moving into East African power pool in order to have reliable power supply in the whole region. You recall that last two, three years, we had drought in Uganda, and we were doing extensive load shedding, that power shedding. And this was not acceptable for the economy and also to the consumer. But had we, had we a power pool, this would have not happened. Financing of large-scale power generation projects, be it geothermal, peat, wind, among others, are highly capital-intensive. To address these, countries and economic blocs must work together to secure financing. When we go to the financial as a group, as one, uh, it's normally quicker and then also it's cheaper because we don't have to duplicate consultancy costs and so on. So we have adopted this method, like the lines I'm talking about, we went as a region to the African Development Bank and we are getting funded for, 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 for these lines. Independent power generation is, however, an alternative avenue countries can exhaustively explore in order to increase capacities. But what can be done to incentivize private power producers? Good power purchase agreement, getting their payment on time and being reliable that what you say today is what will be tomorrow. They should know that the environment is stable, uh, that you will not nationalize their dams, for example. So really, government has to put this trust. They have to have trust in government and have a good regulatory system. More than, more than other countries, uh, the private sector is, is already quite comfortable. It doesn't mean that things are perfect um, now that uh, they have a credible off-taker in, in form of Kenya Power and Lighting. The, the, the tariffs have been uh, cost-reflective, which means that uh, the company is able to pay the, 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 the IPPs. And it also has a very good track record uh, for not defaulting on payments to IPPs. Losses arising from power distribution and transmission are conversely a perennial challenge. There are two types of losses. One is the, the technical losses, which are the losses in the network. This you will need investment to improve by changing conductors, making them bigger size wires and so on. You can deal with that matter. And the other losses which is more difficult to deal with is the commercial losses, which is really unaccounted for electricity. Uh, you can call that theft of electricity. Despite the efforts towards improving power generation, the rising cost of electricity and archaic infrastructure are extensive, creating concerns on implications towards economic development. Electricity supply is unreliable because there are many uh, outages at the distribution level because the distribution network is, is weak. In, in Kenya, there are many uh, long 33 kV lines that are feeding some factories at the end of them. And in the evenings, they can't take their full supply because the voltages are depressed, they are too low. So there is need to reinforce the network. Ketrako in Kenya is going to assist in that. Uh, it, it will bring in some transmission lines that will form a backbone 
for the distribution network, especially in rural areas. The question of cost is also one of uh, where one needs to look not just at the cost of power, but at the cost of no power because you have many industries and homes that have either intermittent and unreliable uh, energy supplies or none whatsoever. And the costs of that are much, much higher than uh, the cost of renewable energy technology. I in the end, the, probably the best way to do it is to let the market decide. And the best example of that in Africa is the South African Renewable Energy Feed-In Tariff, um, IPP, um, procurement process that's going on now and that that's allowed a, a, a lot of projects to get into construction in the long run to effectively create efficient power pools establishing a collective advisory body will be paramount there must be now an organization which will uh, monitor and manage this the East African power pool uh, so that generation uh, projects are monitored and compared against targets, the same with transmission. But we must start by first building the transmission capacity.